Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Kajano. I'm from NetApp. So for today's session, so myself, Kajano from NetApp, and we have uh, Mr. Masaki from Yahoo Japan. So this is a joint session from two companies. So for our speakers' profiles, so Masaki-san, can you introduce yourself? Yes. Uh, I'm from Yahoo Japan. I'm a storage engineer. My name is Masaki. And my first year, I was assigned to appliance storage operation team. There, I was handling the storage uh, device operation, and also I validated OS for the new components as well as net app storage. Same time last year, I was assigned to private cloud team. So uh, it's been um, yeah since I involved myself in the open staff operation. So now I belong to private cloud team. So I validated the back end storage for and storage component. I develop and the open staff Cinder and Swift related solutions. So my name is Katano. I'm from NetApp. So um, I'm responsible for telecom carrier and ID service. Uh, industry customers and I'm also the um, sales or the pre-sales SE and so I'm responsible for Yahoo Japan account again I'm from NetApp so um, this is the uh, joint session and also just a community session so the Yahoo uh, is using the NetApp solution and uh, OpenStack and they're using the uh, OpenStack in a large scale commercial environment. So we would like to cover the, how to use this kind of storage solution in a large scale em environment and also for the, some of the points for future consideration for you. So um, this is today's agenda. So um, first of all, so um, the, we're going to talk about how the Yahoo Japan decided to introduce the OpenStack in their system and how they are currently using. And they will also talk about uh, the important points for the consideration when it comes to storage. And after that, so uh, I will talk about the requirements for uh, Cinder in, in OpenStack uh, storage environment. So the, without further ado, Masaki-san, floor is yours. So from my side, I will talk about an, our approach for OpenStack environment in Yahoo Japan. So as you know, uh, in addition to internet portal side um, operation, we provide a lot of other services. So uh, it's important to offer the services swiftly and also to while maintaining the stable operation. So I'll talk about our insight. So let me talk about how we have decided to use OpenStack. Before OpenStack um, deployment, we were using our uh, the homegrown IaaS environment as a private cloud, but there's a lot of issues with that. First of all, API format is proprietary, and also the, it's quite difficult to develop the IaaS environment and operate with the limited amount of resources and so therefore we have to allocate a lot of the human resource for the operation uh, which is slowing down the new functionality development at the time of the release of course that uh, devices are aging and there's a lot of the, um, advanced function incorporated devices but uh, in order to use that we have to create a new environment so that we cannot really have a better life cycles therefore in the beginning of 2013 uh, we started paying attention to an open stack and an open cloud stack, and we started the validation. Back in 2013, in Asia, cloud stack was more popular. But um, outside of Asia, the open stack was more popular. So after the validation, so uh, because of the flexibility for the custom development and also the information availabilities, and we have decided to choose an open stack. So and six months after we started the validation of the open stack, we uh, were able to uh, release the OpenStack in uh, our development environment. So it's been two years since we started using the OpenStack in our environment. 
Uh, here's the reason why we chose the OpenStack among all of the IR software. As I pointed out, there is a great momentum in OpenStack adoption globally. Uh, earlier stage, there are not much uh, software available uh, for the OpenStack, but there's a, a strong user community in Japan. They're holding the seminar and the workshop. And even we encounter some issues by asking the question to other users and vendors, we are able to solve the solution. Well, the, well, we come up with solutions, so we are the largest OpenStack users here in Japan. And for some functionalities, and uh, we don't have uh, much choices to, for the hardware in the back end. In these cases, we ask the extra work to the vendors, so the vendor pre um, prepared uh, some uh, unique driver for that. So uh, this is the verification to uh, deployment. Uh, in Yahoo Japan, so we are able to release a development environment six months after our validation. I'll come back to this point later. By um, uh, moving into OpenStack environments, so through OPI, OpenStack API, we are able to manage the data center. And in a several dozen seconds, uh, we can start the several hundred instances. And after the release of development environment, and six months later, we uh, released the production environment. For the service side, the members are already uh, used to using uh, OpenStack. So several days after release, uh, we are able to again uh, deploy the service in an open source um, OpenStack environment. So um, the reason why we are able to deploy this environment in a short amount of time is because we don't have to prepare the unique API. Uh, in our traditional environment, we had to develop the basic functionalities and also the additional minor functionalities. And for account integration, we had to do everything by ourselves before. But um, after uh, OpenStack, uh, implementation, well, we can tap into basic functionality in the communities and for the, some minor functionalities. We just outsource the minor functionality development to vendors. So only thing we would do is that uh, user-related functionalities for a private cloud. So that's the only thing we take care of. So we have completed a lot of the custom um, functionalities. So now that we are making the greater contribution to communities. So uh, if you look at this slide, and uh, so using the OpenStack uh, platform, we are uh, distributing these uh, content. And so this is the current services uh, running on the OpenStack. So Yahoo Japan provides more than 100 services. And most of the services are running on the OpenStack platform. So this is, is not the new. And most of the services are already running in, on OpenStack for a year. Some of those instances are constantly running, but an Olympic or soccer World Cup or general election, so um, so have um, a lot of um, high access hike, so that uh, temporarily we enhance the instances. So the reason why we can do is that because of the OpenStack advantage, which is in, in enabling us to manage the large scale resource pools, you can see the t-shirt, so it said Bakusoku, that uh, the explosively fast, so that uh, the, our uh, slogan or vision is we have to meet at a rapidly changing environment. So application release cycles and for um, OpenStack is more proactive for the environmental changes so that we have a great affinity with the OpenStack philosophy with Yahoo's um, slogan. So here is a Yahoo's current OpenStack utilization. So currently Yahoo Japan, so we are running 4,000 compute nodes. 
You can see the system user survey results, and so that you can see the Yahoo's um, position here. In addition to computer node, computer core, 96,000, for instance. So you can see the 50,000. So the, looking at the survey results, we are among the, the top tier users. So that we can say that we are the heavy users. So next is about our private cloud service, uh, service offering status. Under our environment, there are um, development environment and production environment instances. In total, we have about 50,000 instances, maybe half and half for the development and productions. So those instances availability is 99.996%. So uh, this is uh, satisfying the uh, quality level. Currently, traffic density has grown six times comparing with the physical environment. The data volume capacity is 20 petabyte, and the cluster offered is about 20 clusters. This uh, 20 cluster is quite liquid, so there are some closed clusters or newly built clusters as well, and overall they are cycling the life cycle or rolling the life cycle. So uh, there are 11 team members managing this private crowd. There are some members who have been in this private crowd, te crowd team from the beginning, but OpenStack is a combination of the network server stretch and so forth, uh, which under the IIS technology, so infra technology involved members are also in our team. Development and operation responsibilities are allocated, but other than these, we have appliance operating members as well. In case of the troubles on the open stacks, the private craft team responses responds. However, when it comes to the actual device problems, the relevant team members try to solve those issues. So all each team members are collaborating in closely. This is a user usage status. In Yahoo Japan, we have about 2,000 engineers in all services that we are offering. And all those engineers, we offer the IS environment in equivalent manner. When the uh, VM uh, causes the failure or performance degraded, the uh, Office OpenStack operation team swiftly responds to those. Private cloud team, as a part of the IS environment proliferation activities, we uh, periodically hold seminars. This was close to the engineers in the beginning, but recently we see the interest from other uh, team members, and they have started to participate. Maybe thanks to this uh, seminar effect, this uh, usage is proliferating over the engineers, non-engineer employees as well. And there are about 500 instances operated in a day. Uh, however, uh, in a month's time, half of this is uh, punishing or eliminated. Probably because it is a self-service environment, they deploy with some space of room, and after the release, they eliminate this. And in a private cloud environment, all are operated by ourselves. So in comparison to the public cloud operation, the cost was re significantly reduced. Under the regular specification, you may not see a huge difference, but the specification that we require, which is about two core memory, 12 gigabytes uh, under uh, Yahoo, so with this capacity, the difference is huge. So uh, rather than using the public cloud, we have reduced the cost by 97%. So in regard to the operation status, I would like to give you a tip. This is a photo of the Tokyo Tower, which is a radio tower, very famous one in Tokyo. Under our open stack, we use a stretch component, which is consists of the cinder and a small size swift. swift. So if we uh, overlay all the disks, it uh, adds up to 377 meters. Tokyo Tower is 333 meters, so our disk number is higher, or our disk height is not higher than this Tokyo Tower. So next, uh, I would like to talk about the benefit of using OpenStack. 
First of all, the standardized API can be used. By using the standardized API, we are able to leverage the OSS is around it. To date, these areas had been uh, prepared by ourselves, so new IRS environment establishment or new development was uh, slowed down. However, recently we are able to allocate more people to the areas or layers closer to the applications. This is another benefit for the users as well. So leveraging the internet knowledge, they are able to utilize this technology in uh, easy to use manner. The second benefit is a vendor neutral resource utilization. OpenStack uh, has uh, various vendor participations and they have OpenStack unique drivers as well. So oh, we have more options on the hardware resources and that's able to have the abstraction of the hardware. Thirdly, the data center abstraction. OpenStack implementation allows us to reduce the time of the uh, time required for the orders or delivery for the servers. So like securing or wiring network dis design, those uh, things that need to be considered by the users are no longer necessary and thus deployment of the machines became easier. And not only limited to the virtual machine offering, but orchestration deploy is possible. So that is a big benefit of having the open stack. So this is an image of how we offer the service to the users. User uh, use the virtual machine via the control panel that we prepare. Basically, the resource management is done by the operation side and the user side uh, released from the cumbersome activities such as to select the devices or the ordering those. So, a clustered data center or hypervisor uh, types of production or development or storage uh, network, they just need to choose out of the box that is prepared. So if they have particular requirements for the SSD for the application, they send the request to us and we provide the service. In So when the resource is reduced, uh, we are installing new clusters without any it, it, time downs. So the integration interface that we are offering is as shown here. This UI offers the basic functionality of the OpenStack and the cluster-based residual resource uh, statistic, statistic information of virtual machine uh, search uh, functionalities are uh, on here. Availability zone-based usage status can also be confirmed. Initially, you may not need the virtual machine, machine, but as you grow larger over time, you need to consider the disaster recovery and distribute the data in both uh, east and west virtual machines. So this would be a useful tip for you in such event. So this UI allow the uh, uh, startup of the cluster-based deployment. So this is the hypervisor environment that we are currently using. This is a KVM environment. KVM environment is created using Chef. The OpenStack version based recipe is prepared so that the most uh, optimized status is provided for the uh, configuration. When it comes to the large sized clusters, more than 200 hypervisor setup is required, but with Chef, only one command uh, completes the deployment. Also, under the KVM environment, availability zone based flavors are prepared. So, depending on the request from the user, a uh, number of IOPS or, or re reduction of latencies is sent to us. Therefore, we prepare the devices depending on their request. Sometimes we offer the SSD device or sometimes NVMe uh, offered. Other than these, the in combination with the backend used stretch, the stretch's benefit should be maximized. So the Cinder driver prepared by the vendor is also used. 
This is a VMware EX, ESXi environment. Recently, VMware ESXi used uh, environment is released. VMware uses vCenter to allow the integration management of the ESXi under the vSphere environment. If you use a VDS, VM access can be switched by the data center unit. The benefit of the VMware is the high redundancy. VMware functionality cons uh, has the VMware HA, but when the parent server fails down on the but the healthy server can self-restore this, so you can reduce the downtime of the instance. By using that VAI, that uh, VMware plugin, so we can maximize the functionality uh, of the storage at the back end. So instance image is uh, stored in the storage side, so there is no performance degradation. And for when you start the instance, so uh, there are some cloning at the storage side of our image, so that we don't, therefore we can eliminate unnecessary traffic there, hence we can reduce the I.O. So this is the component selection consideration. So uh, in a company, there are three key points we pay attention to whenever we choose the storage component. When uh, we cannot stop I.O. Second, the time required for instance cloning. Thirdly, for the vendor support. So we cannot stop the I.O. That's uh, very important for the business or service continuity. Some of our services uh, includes the lifeline support. So this is the significant point. Even there are some failure, we have to continue the service in the front side. So in the back end operation side, uh, we recover and using the failover and uh, failback functionality. And same thing is applicable to maintenance, rolling updates. So the updates uh, while maintaining the services is an important criteria for uh, component selection. The time required for the instance cloning is in one of the most important uh, criteria for storage selection. If we consider auto scaling, again, we cannot neglect this factor. And the vendor support uh, is of the great importance when it comes to component selection. We have a numerous type of the services, and there's a lot of the requirements for the service operation side. And to meet the requirement by ourselves, uh, it's a lot of work. Therefore, we need a vendor who can listen to outside the requirement and a vendor who can collaborate with us to meet the end user's requirements. So that's, what, that's why this is the, another important criteria. This is our Cinder implementation, and there are three key points. One is the shorten the time for uh, instance cloning in the back end storage. And we are using the clone technology so we can uh, start uh, uh, the huge volume of instance in a short time. The second is the storage installation per availability zone. So the, we have a different kind of the um, power distribution in the data center. So the, we separate the availability zone per um, power distribution line. So uh, in, the, in the same way, we locate the storage. So when the user uh, starts the instance, the user uh, just uh, pay attention to availability zone for the parent and HP, and they can set the, um, the redundancy um, between the instances. If the, therefore, the, if the one power line goes down, so the other power line is uh, live, so therefore, again, that operation can be maintained. Third is the multi and back end configuration. So the, we are pretty open to the storage in the back end, so we're using the appliance storage at the back end. So uh, for the stability and the easy to use, so the appliance is our best option. But uh, storage, software-defined storage is a bit 
And it's, it can be the one of our choices as well because of the technology advancement and we are the early adapter of the new technology. So uh, nowadays that uh, SDS have some um, technology and so um, for the, the other component and other one of the different kind of integration. So that's uh, quite important or interesting point. So, so far we have talked about that um, open stack environment in our side. So, I'll re let's talk about the, why we have decided to use the NetApp storage. Outside of open stack environment, uh, we are the heavy user of the NetApp. So, we have a lot of engineers who have a good knowledge of NetApp. So, that's the one of the important reasons. So, um, because uh, some some of the components are designed to protect the data, such as Cinder and other, we have uh, uh, drivers such as Flex Clone, uh, which can leverage the net of functionalities. These drivers, we don't have to cho change the API in OpStack, so um, that can reduce our development workload. But, um, so. We have, uh, uh, again, the diverse services in IS environment. So I believe the Flex clone is a quite beneficial technology. And even before we uh, move to the virtual environment, we have been using the NFS, common file storage. The NetApp is quite strong in this area. So uh, Manila common file storage component is attractive choices from NetApp. Therefore, and again, uh, we have to have a very collaborative vendors uh, for the continuous support, so that uh, so that we can accumulate the knowledge and experience. So we call it just a uh, co-creation. Um, so just to symbolize our relationship with uh, NetApp. So now I'd like to hand over to NetApp person to talk about uh, consideration points for storage selection from NetApp perspective. So this is a storage requirement specific to IaaS environment uh, from a NetApp perspective. So when it comes to OpenStack environment storage requirement, I think there are two perspectives, perspective of infrastructure and perspective from IaaS environment. For well, the infrastructure side of requirement, and there are some general requirements, high availabilities, simple manageabilities and scalabilities. And also, well, when the monster VM emerges, we have to make sure that monster VM doesn't really have any impact in other VM. So you have to have a finer IO control in a large scale cloud environment. And that uh, data volume is quite high in the storage. And the system disruption has a huge impact on the user side. So uh, therefore, uh, we have to minimize the system uh, outage and as much as possible and for the user's benefit. So if we consider uh, self-service portals, and what is, do you think is a requirement? So, um, NetApp has uh, the in-depth experience in, in this area, uh, especially we have a cluster architecture at the same time. For well, um, self-service portal requirements, well, we have to understand how the users are using the self-service portal. So the OpenStack users, they create a tenant uh, from the self service portal, such as the Horizon. So, for number of instances and number of CPU core and storage capacity, it's set per tenant. So, uh, here's what users do for tenant. Commonly done work is the instance creation and so the creating the backup using the snapshot and the template upload. Traditionally, 
These are handled by an IT department uh, for the virtualization, for instance, for the backup. Sometimes the backup puts a higher workload in the system. So usually that backup is captured uh, at the night time for the job execution. So the VM creation, uh, same. If the several hundred VMs are created and started at the same time, that puts the workload on the host and network side. So if we cannot offload uh, from the storage, and that has a huge impact in the system side of performance, so uh, that has to be considered. In a self-service environment, uh, again, so we have to really understand the additional workload, which is potentially coming from the self-service environment. So as I pointed out, so these are uh, common work done by users on the VM replication and backup using snapshot and template upload. By connecting this to storage functionalities, so the VM replication, so the VM can be replicated without consuming any resource and for snapshot, without creating data, so that there's, uh, therefore that there's no performance degradation for the snapshot creation, and for the data traffic via host and network, so that it's possible to an off-road work in a storage site. Storage Virtualization capability, so all the data can be offloaded to the network, and overall, uh, infrastructure can be flexibly or stably utilized. So, oh, this is about the KVM environment. NetApp using uh, offering the single driver for the KVM environment. NetApp unified driver is offered. This unified driver is leveraged to back up the snapshot or data offload or virtual machine uh, cloning, linking it to the Flex clone. So given the time constraints, let me skip this slide. Next, I'd like to talk about the VMware environment. So this environment is in case, uh, when it is controlled by OpenStack, when it is used of ESX. ESX driver or vCenter will be used. So in case of the Cinder usage, VMDK driver is leveraged to boot the uh, instance or send it the create the SSS. Vendor provided Cinder driver no longer be usable under this environment. That can be a uh, problem. Therefore, the virtual machine replication would be done through the vSphere, and VMware's snapshot would be created. Of course, the traffic cannot be uploaded. And the virtual environment plugin tool that we offer, the virtual storage console, the backup capability is offered that, by that. So these tools are no longer usable under this environment. So the self-service portal requirement, how are we able to satisfy this requirement? Basically, VMware environment, native uh, functionality needs to be used. Therefore, vSphere and storage are linked, which is VAI or NFC VAI, or recently released Vivo, this new technology are leveraged. That is a very important factor. What is written on here is the integration specific uh, details. This is a network-based linkage. In case of the virtual machine cloning or replication, NFC or Vivo uh, can be used for the linkage with the Flex clone without uh, degradation with the capacity. VAI could also be used, but VMDK used uh, cloning. NF uh, SK usage is uh, better for this application. And in case of the snapshot, unfortunately, snap VAI or NFC VAI 
uh, function would not uh, supplement this capability requirement. So V-6 released Vivo uh, usage needs to be considered. By using Vivo, VM snapshot can be linked to the uh, snapshot, the VM clone. But this is a new functionality, so how you deploy this functionality needs to be done with a great caution. Lastly, data creation offload. So this functionality, VAI or NFS VAI, can be leveraged for this offloading. So with this, KVM vSphere environment have been explained. But hypervisor, depending on which hypervisor you use, the functionality you need to utilize will be different. So hypervisor, uh, the storage, which has a relation or the linkage capability, it needs to be chosen. And you have to clarify the requirement for the self-service environment. Lastly, we'd like to ask Mr. Masaki again to talk about his uh, future initiatives. So let me talk about the future schedule. We would like to proceed with Manila. The shared file system is demanded within a company as well, and Manila allows the file sharing over the tenant and heat based on scale time uh, you are able to create the common uh, shared file system so I think there are ways to utilize this and this shared file system has been widely used since the physical era and there are many yeah, it is easy to uh, implement the service and there is no end to this utilization or this service. And those users who were not able to migrate towards the IIS, I think this is a great feature. Lastly, let me wrap up this session. The benefit of the OpenStack is at the standardized API utilization and hardware resource utilization and data center abstraction. And the stretch component provides the availability, efficiency, and a safe environment. So the vendor stretch should be used, which has a proven record and know-how. And for the convenience improvement for the OpenStack environment, the co-creation with the user and vendor is very crucial. So that concludes our session. If there are questions, please uh, contact us. We will be here. So please contact us directly. Thank you very much for your attention.